Okay, we're going to do together uh, chapter nine, exercise five, Potter Junior High. And in this exercise, we're going to be reading a text file. So I just created my um, application here, and I haven't built my form out yet or anything because the first thing that we're supposed to do is take this names and grades.txt file and copy it into bin debug for our project. All right, so that particular file, you, uh, you're you given that from the publisher. For my class, you can download it from your LMS, either Blackboard or Brightspace D2L. Or if, if like I said, if you pulled it from the publisher, um, it's sitting here in your CHEP 9 folder. And if we take a look at this, <clears throat> we have name, grade, name, grade, name, grade, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through. Okay, so I'm going to take that file, I'm going to copy it, and I'm supposed to put it in this project's bin debug. So to figure out where this project is, when I can select my project here, I can right click, open folder and file explorer. And then we have bin debug, and I can put it right here. So I just hit paste. All right, so I copied that file in there. So that was this one here create this interface. Uh, so once again, I'm going to go create the interface and I'm going to do it a little quickly. Okay, so here's our form, um, generally laid out. Of course, I forgot to do my tab order. Okay, got that. Um, so we have LST grades for this list box, LST names. Um, this label is LBL number, and it has no text in it to start with. And we have our two buttons, uh, display and exit and then I have those set as the accept and cancel buttons on my form. My form starts off in the middle of the page. This will probably throw an error because I forgot one thing. Okay, actually did not error this time. I forgot to in my project set my form. All right, and we'll just program the exit button real quick. Okay, so use the string collection editor to enter the five grades in LST grades control. So here's LST grades. I can do edit items and the grades are A, B, C, D, F. Say okay. And I can see now how um, tall this needs to be so I can make that a little bit shorter. I'm gonna make names the same height and I can take my buttons and get them to line up and I can make my form a little bit shorter there. So, a, B, C, D, F are my grades, and that can actually be a little narrower too. Okay, and then on LST names, we're only gonna have output here. So I'm going to, on LST names, I'm going to set selection mode to none because we're not actually selecting any of these things, and sorted is going to be true. So when we list the students here, their names are gonna be sorted. So that was part B of step five. Part C is code the exit button's click event. We've already done that. Part D, the first item in LST control should be selected when the interface appears. 
So when the interface appears, double click on your form and LST grades that selected index is equal to zero. So let's just check this out. When the form runs, we see that grade is selected by default and our exit button works. We tested those two things. Um, so this was Um, really wanted to, we can say this is C. Right. Contents of LST names and number control, LBL number. Do we call this thing LBL number? Let's just make sure we did. Okay. Those should be cleared when a different grade is selected in LST grades. So LST grades. I'm going to do selected index changed and double click on that. We have a new event handler when that happens. And I'm going to say LST uh, names dot items dot clear and LBL number dot text is equal to string dot empty. Or you could use double quotes like that. So this was part E. The display button should display the names of the students who have earned the grade in LST grades control. It should also display the number of students who have earned the grade. So that's going to be an uh, LVL number. So this is the last bit is display. So we want to make sure that our um, file exists. So here I'm going to say uh, if io.file.exists and our file name is what is it? Names and grades dot text. If that exists, then do stuff. Okay. And actually, I'm going to flip this around because I don't like using else statements. So if this does not exist, then we're going to do our message box dot show. And we're going to say uh, names and grades dot text does not exist in bin debug. So that's a pretty uh, elaborate error message that you might not want to show a user, but we're going to use that. Uh, so message box dot show, um, the name of this is, uh, let's say file I O error. And the button that we're going to let the user click is just okay. And we're going to show an error icon. So if the file does not exist, show the error message and then um, exit the sub procedure. And at this point, I'm going to say, I know that names and grades that text does exist. Okay. And we're happy about that. So we want to open the file. So I'm going to say in, in file as IO dot stream reader, and then in file is equal to IO dot file dot open text and the name of this file again, names and grades dot text. So one of the things that I don't like is we have names and grades dot text, names and grades dot text, names and grades dot text. This is a perfect example of when we should use a variable. So I'm going to say in str file name as string is equal to names and grades dot text. And then instead of using names and grades dot text in my code, I'm going to replace it with the string. So I have to do a little bit of work here because it's part of a string. But the other places we're just replacing that. So if not IO file exists, str file name, what is str file name? It's names and grades dot text. So if we ever change files, we just change it in one spot. Then this changes, our error message changes, and opening the file changes. So what we want to do is we want to loop through reading this file line by line, because if you remember, this file has a name and a grade, a name and a grade, and the grade comes after the name. All right. And with our application, we're going to choose a grade like C, and then we have to find all the people who have earned a C and put them in this box here. 
Okay, so let's go back to our code. I'm going to say do until in file dot peak is equal to negative one. And what am I going to do is I'm going to say, um, you know, let's actually before this loop, I'm going to say dim str this student name as string. And I also want this student grade as string. Okay, so I need, I have two variables set up for this student name and this student grade. And then I can say str this student name is equal to in file dot read line. So I'm going to read the first line, which is the student's name. I just read Helen. And then I'm going to read the grade. str this student grade is equal to in file dot read line. So that just reads through everything. Um, let's not forget after our loop here, we need to in file dot close. Don't want to forget reading or, you know, closing this up when we're done um, reading it. And now here I can say if um, str this student grade is equal to what is the grade that was selected? That's lst grades dot selected item dot to string. If that's the case, then so if the grade in that we read in the text file, so A, B, whatever, if that's equal to whatever grade was selected, then I'm going to do LST names dot items, that items collection dot add. I want to add to that uh, STR this student name. Okay. And then we also want to have some sort of counter so we know how many students have this grade. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. Um, one would be dim int number of students as integer is equal to zero. And then whenever that matches, I can say number of students plus equals one. And after our loop, I can do LBL number dot text is equal to int number of students to string as a number with no decimal points. So let's give this a shot. Run this. I'll choose C, hit display. George and Nancy both have C's. Is that right? Well, Helen has an A, Peter has a B, Yolanda. Anyway, our C's are down here. There's George and Nancy. But remember, Nancy was added and then George, but this list is sorted. Okay. So this appears to be working pretty well. Charles and Jacob, you're failing. Um, so that's working. There's a couple of ways I would improve on this, though. All right. One would be, let's see, we have this unnecessary variable that's incrementing every time we add someone's name to this list to come up with this four here. All right. So a better way to do that would be, let's get rid of that counter. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of incrementing that counter. But then how do we know how many students there are? Well, that's LST names dot items dot count, right? Count the number of items in LST names, convert that to a string. So this is going to give us the exact same thing. I say C, hit display, there's George and Nancy again. All right, nothing changed there. All that this is doing is counting the number of items here. So that's fine. Um, and well, let me just make sure everything's done here. So the display button should display the students who have earned the grade. It should display the number of students who have code that and then save and test. Okay, so we did all that. So I would argue that this works fine, but I would also say that this isn't the best way to do this application because every time you hit BTN display, it opens that file and reads the whole thing. Okay. So if you have a lot of people using this and going back and forth, you're opening the file, closing the file, opening the file, sorry, opening it, reading it, closing it, opening it, reading it, closing it, opening it, reading it, closing it. If this file doesn't change that often, maybe consider opening the file and reading everything and then storing it in a two-dimensional array 
like we did in chapter eight and do all of that on mybase.load. Okay, so you would create a class level variable, a class level two dimensional array that opens the file, stores all this information. And then when your, your btn display.click you, references the two dimensional array and it's much faster. Okay, now I know this is already ridiculously fast because it's a simple application. But if you have a lot of people trying to do this and multiple people try to open this file at the same time, you could run into problems. So that's why if, uh, you know, if you open it up when the application loads and you just open it once, you're not going to run into people, you know, trying to open the same file at the same time. There you go. That was the intermediate uh, application for Potter Junior High.